Rest. That was all the old man wanted, rest for his weary bones after a lifetime of hard work. And fortunately enough, he may have his rest, no matter how brief. He may enjoy the little time he has left with his descendants. The three curious little minds always had questions about the world, and always yearned to hear stories from their grandfather, and he happily obliged their wishes. One particular day the three boys were playing together in the living room while their parents were away at work. The old man's task was to keep them in check. Though his body was tired and his bones old and decalcified, he did his best to oblige the wishes of his grandchildren. He did his best, like in those old days when this place was no more than an inhospitable desert. Grandpa, can we hear the story of home again? The younger of the three, no more than five years old, asked as his grandfather sat onto a couch after giving the boys something to eat. Home. You are home. I think you know everything there is to it. The old man gave a light chuckle after the remark. No, we mean the real home. You know what Chuck means. The eldest of the three said, followed by nods of the two other boys. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. The old man said, then clearing his throat, continued. As I've said before, I was born at the beginning of the 21st century. Those were uncertain times filled with anxiety and fear. People yearned for something to strive for in what amounted to a new world. New world in a sense that things had changed in just a span of one or two generations so much that people hadn't yet adapted to the new environment. What is adapted? One of the boys around seven asked. Oh, the old man exclaimed, reaching for his glass of water on a nearby table. You see this glass here, he said. The boy nodded. The water inside this glass adapted to the shape of the glass, say, I pour the same water into a kettle. It'll become the shape of the kettle. It adapts to the world around it. What I meant by adapted is that we humans aren't like water. We don't quickly adapt to new things as water does. We are more so like clay. It can be molded over a certain period of time. And even after it had been molded, it takes time for it to harden. You could say we did in a way adapt to the new world, but we still hadn't had enough time to harden, to stay in place once the training wheels were off. We had much to learn, and still do. The boys nodded, the youngest exclaiming, Yay, new word! The old man chuckled at the remark. He enjoyed teaching them new phrases and words. He continued his story. When I was around seventeen or eighteen, about the age of your cousin Adam, I decided to try and chase my dream, and my dream was to become an astronaut. I wanted to explore the great expanse that is space and go where none had gone before. I wanted to be a pioneer. It took me many years of studying. It took many risks. All the while the world around me kept changing at a rapid pace. It felt as if every day there was something new going on. Many wars had been fought. Many diseases had arisen. Many had been cured. Many rivalries were forged and many hatchets buried. In my time when I was at university I met your grandmother. She was a talented in her field. She was top of the class in almost every lecture, and since I was also quite good at school, a kind of rivalry formed. We would compete in various competitions that were organized. We bragged about our percentages on tests, but that was all in good humor. Eventually the competition became a friendship. After that it blossomed into something more. The old man gazed into no particular spot for a few moments, recalling those youthful moments and reliving those happier times of his life. We soon got married soon after graduation. We worked together and lived together. I remember we talked about having kids, but due to the strain of work and the uncertain times ahead of us, we decided to wait some more. After a few years, a few new developments happened that changed everything. A few innovations made it possible to make colonies on distant worlds. The world that was on top of that list was, of course, Mars. The first wave left in 2042 when your grandmother and I were nearing 40. Those brave pioneers ventured to the Red Planet, a journey that lasted almost six months. Not all of them made it, unfortunately, but Mars had nearly 10,000 new souls that called it home. Permanent structures were built, a society formed. One day, on the 23rd of April, 2045, your grandma and I got a proposal of a lifetime. We were selected to go with the second wave. We, of course, could decline, but the old youthful dream was still with me. 
Your grandma was a bit more skeptical, but she wanted to turn a new leaf, to start a new life, if you will. And the opportunity came. We went through rigorous tests and exercises. We would be probably the oldest people so far to venture so far from the planet, but compared to today, we were still young and full of vigor. The old man said while laughing slightly, after nearly half a year of training, we finally were on the ship. We left our homes and the homes of our ancestors. At the time, I felt no regrets, though today I feel kind of homesick. Alas, we began the journey that would last for six months. All was going well until, well, your father and aunt came into the picture. Yeah, Dad told us he was born in space, one of the boys exclaimed excitedly. Indeed, we really didn't expect them. Even the tests done before the launch were negative. Miracle children, what else is there to say? The pregnancy was difficult for Clara, and since there was no gravity, we worried if the kids would be okay. We were hoping she could give birth once we land, because the ship was not equipped with the necessary things for delivery. But we were out of luck. Only two weeks before the landing, she went into labor. A short silence hung in the room. The boys sat quiet, sitting on the edge of their seats, it was the longest eight hours of my life, but eventually she did it. She managed to give birth to a healthy boy and girl, twins. But, ah, uh, she, she didn't make it. She passed away due to complications a few days later. Being a lone father on another planet with death lurking at every corner, a scientist fighting to build a better foundation for my children and mankind, it is a true miracle that your father and aunt survived. Hell, that I even survived. Thankfully, once the third wave came, life was more manageable. I was among the oldest there until the third wave arrived, and Clarence and Kate were without a doubt the youngest people on the planet. To make a very long story short, once they grew up they saw themselves as Martians, though they weren't officially the first Martians. That title goes to a girl that was born a whole eight years later. As you know, they were quite tall, still are. By the age of fifteen, both of them were the same height as I. That is the effect of lower gravity, I guess. They attended the first school ever built here. Kate went on to study back on Earth. She had to get an exoskeleton for a time before her bones could adapt to the gravity, though even when she did, the doctors recommended she doesn't strain herself too much. Your dad stayed here because he met your mother. Once Kate was back, she gave us little Adam, and shortly thereafter, well, nearly half a decade later, you came along, arguably the first generation born on another world. The boys looked at each other, then at their grandfather. Is there more? One of them asked. More? Well, I could go on about it the whole day, but I'll give you a little fun fact, another word, Anthropocene. Once he said it, the boys struggled to repeat after him. After a while, the middle child managed to pronounce it right. Great job! The old man exclaimed once the boys figured out the pronunciation. What does it mean? They asked, curious. It is a word that derives from a language called Greek, Anthropos means man, human, while the suffix seen means new. In short, new man, or as I like to put it, the age of man. It is a period of time that just started recently, geologically speaking, where us humans started to make a major dent on the earth, so much so that we made an age for it. New word, the youngest exclaimed in excitement, while the eldest boy seemed to be in deep thought. Grandpa, why don't you continue the story? Not of mum and dad, but of humans. The old man was in thought for a few brief moments. Then he gave a response. I unfortunately cannot. That is up to you, boys. You will continue to write it. He said, Oh, when will we know the ending? The middle child asked. I don't know. All I know is that this is only the very beginning.